The next uh, speaker that I have the distinct pleasure of introducing is Abraham Arabi Sahib. Abraham Arabi Sahib is a research assistant in the Hussein Lab at the University of Pittsburgh. He received a B uh, bachelor's degree from the University of New Haven, Connecticut. Abraham uh, Sahib's current research focuses on the bio me biochemical mechanisms that trigger acute pancreatitis with the goal to develop therapeutic targets. To date, to date, Abraham Sahib has co-authored 13 scientific papers, five of which he has co first, five of which he is the first author, which is a very monumental uh, uh, achievement. Abraham Sahib was the recipient of the 2010 American Gastroenterology Association Research Fellowship Award and a 2011 American Pancreatic Association Mini Sabbatical Award. Abraham Sahib is a longtime friend of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. I've not personally uh, known Abraham Sahib for a long time until today, but I have heard a lot of great things. So, Abraham Sahib. Thank you very much. Awadu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahi rahman rahim Assalamu alaikum to everyone here. Really, it is uh, quite a privilege to be <laughs> even sitting <laughs> on this stage with people I'm not sure I'm quite worthy to be sitting next to, um, as, uh, as they're just loading my talk, um, I think uh, I'll, just, uh, I'll just say that yes, I've been, uh, I've been a friend of the uh, <clears throat> Amity Muslim community for quite some time. I'd go even one step further and say I've, I've been quite an admirer um, of the community and many of its people. If it wasn't for uh, not only the, the grace of God, um, but also the graciousness of Amity Muslims, in particular, Dr. Hussein, uh, for giving me an opportunity and a chance. Uh, when I was just a young undergraduate student at the University of New Haven, I'm not really quite sure where I'd be or, uh, <laughs> or what I'd be doing. And so I'm really uh, uh, deeply indebted to Dr. Hussein for his kindness and openness um, and willingness to, uh, to have me uh, work with him. And I, I know I don't have to sing his praises to this crowd, but uh, I really feel like it's, it's a necessary responsibility of mine. Um, and so now that uh, the talk is here, um, I'm going to tell a short story, um, uh, the title of which is uh, Calcium Targets and Pancreatitis. Uh, I'm at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, and this photo that you see is, uh, oops, sorry, is actually uh, our hospital where our, our laboratory uh, is, and it's, it's a beautiful facility, and if uh, anyone ever has the opportunity to visit the University of Pittsburgh, I'd encourage you to, to stop by. It really is quite a place to do science and, and medicine. Um, and so uh, there was a nice introduction about the pancreas, and we heard a really great talk by my mentor, Dr. Hussein. Um, and so I don't need to go into too much detail about what the pancreas is or, or how detrimental pancreatitis is as a disease. Um, but uh, I will say um, that calcium is an important part, an important component for initiating pancreatitis, which is something a lot of people don't realize. Um, if we look at the pancreas and we break it down, um, most of the pancreas is actually what we call the exocrine pancreas, which secretes digestive enzymes. And uh, the cells that do that are organized into clusters, as we see here. And we call those clusters an acinus or an acini. Um, and if we break that cluster of cells down even further, we have what's known as a single acinar cell. And this is really where the initiating phases of pancreatitis take place. Um, and uh, where most of the lab, uh, most of the work in our lab um, focuses on. Um, and specifically, uh, what we're talking about here is uh, certain insults that affect the pancreas, like alcohol, uh, certain drugs, uh, gallstones and bile are known to, to cause pathological indices within the acinar cell. And, and one of the earliest things that we see when looking at these cells in isolation and culture um, is the elevation of calcium levels within the acinar cell. And this is a very distinct feature of, of uh, early pathology within this cell, especially as it precludes pancreatitis. Um, and in very basic terms, of course, it's much more uh, detailed and complex than just this. But um, essentially, uh, we know that calcium is linked to pancreatitis, but we don't quite know how. Uh, and that's really the main focus of our lab. And so I must admit, this. Uh, this verse from the Quran is uh, something that I wasn't fully aware of and never really appreciated until recently, until it was actually brought to my attention by Dr. Hussain. Um, 
And it really pertains to the idea of how is it that we can visualize things that happen within the cell, and in our context, calcium. Um, and so the verse is, وَمَا دَرَى لَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُكْتَلِفِيًا أَلْوَانُهُ إِنَّ فِي دَلِكَ لَأَيَّةً لِكَوْمٍ يَذَّكَّرُونَ uh, and the translation of that is, uh, and he has pressed into service the things he has created for you in the earth, varying in colors. Surely, and that is a sign for a people who take heed. And that's from Surat uh, An Nahal, um, and it's uh, verse 14. Now, um, just reading this, it, it may not be completely intuitive as to how we can apply this to science, um, but interestingly enough, uh, the story began um, quite some time ago um, with, uh, actually there's, there's a couple other people, and I'm sorry, these aren't exactly my most updated slides, but uh, I think I can work around it a little bit. Um, there's two other people that uh, were involved in this project, and um, this discovery first began in the 1960s with the finding that uh, jellyfish uh, emitted um, these luminescent and fluorescent proteins. Um, and it wasn't until 20 years later in the 1980s and 1990s that some people from Colombia and, and this gentleman here from UC San Diego uh, had found that there was actually a fluorescent protein that was even more potent uh, than the initially described luminescent protein. Um, and in, in simple terms, what we're talking about here mm -hmm. is ways in which we can visualize what's happening within the cell in real time. Um, and it, it was a very clever technique, and I encourage you all to kind of look at the story behind this because it's, it's a really fascinating concept about an idea that was almost completely trashed um, on, on uh, terms of its, uh, on the basis that it didn't seem to be an important uh, finding um, uh, in the beginning, again, going back to the 60s. Um, and so how do, we, how do we apply this again? <laughs> I'm sorry that this isn't exactly the most updated slide. Maybe as, I can talk about it maybe as, um, we're pulling up uh, the more recent one, which I believe was in a folder. Um, uh, Chen and, and colleagues had devised all these different fluorescent proteins of all different colors, and they're all naturally occurring in jellyfish. And they were actually able to take the sequence of DNA that coded for these proteins, amplify it in bacteria, uh, and then transfect it back into living cells. And so the result in layman's terms is that now we can visualize what's happening in the cell um, using colors. And it's a very clever technique, and it's one that's very easy to understand and appreciate uh, when, we, when we see these things take place. Um, and uh, our lab has, has used a lot of uh, what we call immunofluorescence, which is the use of, of these kinds of techniques to visualize certain parts of the cell. This middle picture here is a picture of the pancreas that we had done some work on. The top picture and the bottom picture are not um, from our group, but they, they show how we can use fluorescent probes to visualize biology in real life, which is something that's, um, I mean, in, in simple terms, it's, it's cool. Um, and um, I think the video here that I'm going to show, uh, it's playing, actually. This was acquired by uh, Mr. or Dr. To be Asan Shah. Um, and this is what it looks like when you stimulate Asner cells with uh, a known agonist or stimulator of calcium. Uh, what you see is a shift from a green fluorescent signal to a red fluorescent signal. Uh, and it's a bit complicated as to how that works, but it uses fluorescent dyes um, that bind calcium within the cell um, and then ultimately uh, will change uh, in their uh, amplitude or in their level of uh, fluorescence as more calcium is being released within the cell. Um, and so it's a, a really um, a very clever way of being able to visualize dynamic calcium signals within pancreatic acid cells. And again, this is important for our lab and for many others uh, in understanding what types of insults, what types of uh, agonists or drugs alter uh, the calcium signals within the cell, which again is a critical part of, of the early phases of pancreatitis. Um, and so the question naturally is, we know that calcium is important, we know that calcium leads to disease. What's the link? What's the link between elevations in calcium and the initiation of pancreatitis? Um, and so, of course, uh, anyone who's uh, done biology or any, any type of scientific research knows that nothing is quite as simple as it's going to be A to B to C. Uh, there's usually many diverse uh, webs of connections that exist, especially within a cell. And so calcium obviously has many targets. Our lab was fortunate enough to identify one that seemed to be very important in uh, my, mouse models and uh, uh, as well as uh, some human studies, which I, I won't talk about here. Um, and that, the name of that molecule is calcineurin, and uh, calcineurin is essentially activated by calcium. Uh, and we found that if you block calcineurin, um, 
you have reduced outcomes of pancreatitis. You have less severe pancreatitis, um, and uh, ultimately you can protect mice and we believe humans against this disease if you block this molecule, which again is a target of calcium. Um, and these are some data demonstrating that, which is that uh, on the far left, on the top, you have uh, a control pit tissue, which is a normal healthy pancreas. In the middle, you have what pancreatitis looks like. And on the far right, you have uh, a pancreas that was given a drug that causes pancreatitis, but prior to that, uh, we gave a drug that blocks calcineurin. And what you see is that the pancreas looks a lot more like the first uh, picture than the middle picture, which essentially means that we're able to actively block um, a lot of the early uh, outcomes of pancreatitis when, within the ASNR cell. And, and this was, we've done several studies. Dr. Kamaldin Mouli, who I'm sure is no stranger to this crowd, uh, did a lot of the work related to this project, and um, it's, uh, it's been a very fruitful endeavor for the lab. And so in summary, uh, I've talked that, I've mentioned that calcium is important in the early stages uh, of pancreatitis, so that visualizing calcium is made possible by these colored molecules, which have been prophesized in the Holy Quran uh, in several ways. Um, calcineurin is a, a molecule which is a target of calcium, which may provide a critical link between elevations in calcium and pancreatitis. Um, that blocking calcineurin protects against disease, and that calcineurin inhibitors, importantly, may be a viable therapeutic option in the clinical setting. And this is really the next step for our lab, getting this into humans, because, of course, it's nice to know about mice, but at the end of the day, we don't really care all that much. We're looking to, to solve human problems. Uh, lastly, I'll just acknowledge these people, uh, the pictures of which uh, they are not currently with us, but their work uh, provided tremendous support um, and was really fundamental. Kamal Din Mouli, Dr. Kamal Din Mouli, uh, who's currently at Ohio State University, Tanvir Javed, who did uh, a lot of the surgical models um, more recently that I didn't talk too much about, Mr. Shayar Sarwar, who's here, and uh, Mr. slash Dr. Asan Shah, who was really one of the first people in the lab to, to, uh, to do some of the early calcium work. Um, and that, with that, I'll end. I'll maybe look forward to talking about, uh, taking some questions later, but Jazakallah, and thank you very much for having me. Really appreciate it. Thank you.